Richard Lonman is a mining company that's in what looks like a lot of trouble. Um, it's having a rights issue, and this morning it put out a very curious kind of statement urging its investors to accept their rights and to take them up and to basically hand over their money to the company. Um, it's an unusual strategy for a company to take, and I'm wondering what it signals. You're quite right. It, it is unusual. I can't think in years of being a corporate financier of ever having seen anything like it, and since I don't <coughs> recall it. So here is the announcement urging shareholders to vote. It, I think it signals two things. I think it, it shows that the underwriters, who are South African, US, and, and UK banks and advisors and mm. brokers, they are worried about the likely outcome of this. And there are two big shareholders here. First is Xtrata, which has 25%, yeah. and which previously had made a couple of approaches saying, we'll underwrite a 1 billion rights mm. issue if you let us put the management in. Lonmin blew a raspberry at that one, and then Xtrata came back and said, OK, we'll support the rights issue as long as we can put the management in. And another Rosbury ensued. But beyond Xtrata, with its 25%, is South Africa's largest fund manager and, and asset gatherer, Old Mutual, which has about 11% directly and then through funds under management, another nine. So if you like, about 45% in all that has the makings of a no vote right. if that was the way it was going to go. I, I wonder where it's going to go. But I wonder what, I mean, what is Lonman's fundamental problem here? Because um, obviously it has a lot of debt. And uh, you know, uh, mining prices, obviously, commodity prices have basically fallen through the floor. Um, and you know, the South African operations have been hit by strikes, and there's been a lot of un unrest um, in in the sort of core market for Lonmin. But it seems to have been badly handled at the same time. I mean, management is yes. not doing a great job here in convincing yes. investors that, that is on top of the situation. This is this has been a perpetual problem. In in fact, if if you look back pre-crisis, Lonmin began to look quite good, and then then it needed to go to shareholders, mm. cap in hand in about two thousand and nine. So this is now the second rights issue in fairly quick succession. This to me really is a management problem. Right. Now, to be fair, um, they've had <coughs> their 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 unfair share of. Um, blips with furnaces that are blown up and things like that. They've now got two furnaces, so hopefully they fix that. Mm. And then they put in a new manager, Ian Farmer, who very sadly is ill, mm. and so he's had to step aside and we've got an acting CEO and it, it's just uncertainty. Operationally, the management is beginning to look a little bit better, but the fact is that there's always some excuse with Lonmin and it's coming up with production guidance year in, year out, and it's only met its own guidance once in seven years, right. past seven years. So should shareholders actually take up these rights issues? The shareholders should uh, go to the management of Lonmin and say, we will back this shareholder and give you your money and get the banks off your back only if you promise to change, and that means starting with the chairman, who's been there a little bit too long, and going on down through refreshing the board. And in ideally, what we want is a board that is much closer to the operating assets in South Africa in the Bushveld. And we, we, we need operational management that's already shifted to South Africa, but it needs good, strong mm. mining experience leadership. So I think only support if you can get both those things and delivery on them. OK, that would really put it up to the management of Lonmin, but it's probably the kind of challenge they actually need to turn the company around. Thanks, Richard.